the judge said, you know, where's the evidence? You cannot just wantonly defame people. The South African Venture Capital Association said it categorically that these are standard terms in a private equity environment. But it's five years ago, I can hardly believe it, that uh, Ahmed Sepo Malelwa, he was at the time accused by Bantu Holomisa, a politician in South Africa, of being the kingpin of a corrupt network. Five years later, all of that's now finally been put to rest. We will talk with the entrepreneur in a moment. Seppo, it's been quite a journey, five years. It's been lovely getting to know you and uh, to have you as a shareholder in Biz News as well. So we're more than, more than friends, business partners as well. Uh, but I'm sure that this engagement that you've had due to what Bantu Honomisa accused you of um, must have taken a lot of time, certainly a lot of money, and getting your reputation finally sorted out as a result of that, uh, also quite a lot of energy. But maybe let's go back to the beginning and exactly what Holomisa said about you and where it came from. Alec, thanks for for having me. Uh, as you know, at the at the time, you know, and uh, and I really appreciate that. Like you know, as this happens, you know, exactly five years later, you know, I can speak to you, and one is still here and able to relate the story, because you know, by right, I think, you know, uh, I don't think it was his intention that we are still around. Because he threw around stories like, you know, uh, our story would make the Gupta story look like a Sunday picnic, you know, which was very, very, very hurting. Because if you consider like, you know, that well, what happened there and like, you know, you, cons you know, it was, and, you know, somebody referring uh, to your business as if like, you know, it's like, complicated structures meant to deceive uh, uh, and also referring to you as like, you know, fleecing, I think in the report, then there's like, you know, fleecing, you know, your investor. It, it, it was, it, it, it was, I think it was meant to be destructive and it was very personal, you know. Uh, so in that sense, it was very important to not rest until, you know, the truth came out. And I don't believe that uh, uh, Horamisa was interested in the facts. Where did he get his information from? And what, what was his motive? You've obviously given this a lot of thought over the last five years. Alec, I... I, I can't say for sure where he got his information from. But whoever got him his information or who, however way they wrote it, and however way he wrote it on his website, I'm sure even to him it didn't make sense. And whoever wrote it for him, I don't know whether they also understood what they wrote. Uh, and they wrote it also in a manner that they were meant to be demeaning, they're meant to be hurtful, and they're meant to play games, and they're meant to destroy, because nobody writes in that manner, and uh, intends that, like, you know, that there would be anything left after they, you know, strike like that, because it was meant to be fatal. Do you know him at all? Have you had anything to do with him Not before this incident? All. Not at all, and I've never had uh, dealings with him. During this whole episode, I only bumped into him once at a uh, golf event at Sun City. I was sitting down at, a, uh, at, at one of the cafes with my wife, and he came. To one of the bars and he sat there and I said to my wife look at who's, who just came and sat there 
I went up to him and I said to my wife, I'm going to go up to him. And it was like, I think about two and a half years ago. Or so. I said to my wife, you know, I'm going to walk, walk up to him and then uh, and, and talk to him and ask him, you know, and introduce myself. I walked up to him and said, hi, how are you? I said, hi. And he said, uh, who are you? And I said, I'm Tepo Matrele. You don't know me. He says, no, I don't know you. He says, oh, I thought you were a much older guy. You know, and I thought, <laughs> you know, what's this all about? And I said, but, you know, so you don't know me? He says, no, I don't know you. But And I said, but then what then is this all about? He says, no, you know, it's it's all people who've got, like, not jealous of you. And some of you are, you know, just some are, like, you know, from, you know, what? Uh, you know, uh, 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 in, in the industry, and some are like, you know, some previous uh, partners, or as uh, so there's a bit of uh, politics in it, you know, and stuff like that. I said, but what did that have to do with me? I don't have politics. I'm not in politics and all that, you know. So it became very perplexing. And, you know, and then he wanted to then chat, and I just left it at that. And he said, because it just didn't make any sense to me. But it was very clear to me. He made it very clear, I think, who one of the persons he was referring to, to me, it could have been. But, uh, yeah. So it was a bit of a game to Holomisa, uh, it seems. But it's a game that he's going to pay dearly for, if I understand correctly, because he's now been shown to have not told the truth at all, even though the allegations were quite dramatic. And you are uh, still suing him from, for defamation. And look, you know, the sad part about this is that in the beginning, he refused an invite to come and meet with us and like listen to what this is all about. He, it was important for him to be very popular on social media. It was important for him to let more to Ghana votes and behave uh, in the manner that he did. Uh, so listening to facts was not important to him. To destroy and to like, you know, uh, continue with that narrative was very important to him. And so therefore, uh, it's also important, it, it became then a five-year exercise for us to be on our back foot and to be able to now be on our back foot to, to, because, and try to tell what the truth is. Because it's not as if now we are clear. We're not clearing anything. We've always been telling the truth. And even in the beginning, the sad part about it is that even like some of like, you know, the journalist fraternity, nobody came to like listen, except you who came and sat with us for three hours and looked at through what we said. Here is the evidence of everything and who we are. So it has always been like that and nothing has ever changed from five years ago when he made the statements from 17 years ago when we started in terms of the allegations that he made. And those things have been tested, I think, on at least five occasions. And, uh, you know, in a, in a constitutional court, the judge said, you know, where's the evidence? You cannot just wantonly defame people. The South African Venture Capital Association said it categorically that these are standard terms in a private equity environment. That these structures are the way like no private equity works. So there is nothing untoward about how we are structured. We had our own independent, you know, uh, investigation done by in a forensic, like, you know, accounting firm and uh, advocate uh, Terry Mutal. 
everything has been consistent throughout. And now this investigation done by the PRC and GPF independently themselves comes up with the same thing. There is no evidence of the type of, you know, allegations made by this gentleman. None at all. But what does it tell us about the country and where we are that, that people still are maybe that immature, that if they don't understand something rather than finding out about it, especially in the business world, it's, it's good to just throw mud, especially, I guess, if you're a politician looking for votes? You know, there is one statement which I kind of like, you know, I think which uh, President Obama made some time back. He said, facts matter. And it would appear here that facts do not matter. People can just want to say or do as they please. Facts do matter. The truth does matter. And that's what we should be led by. And unless we get back to some of these basic principles which should be leading us, and also like the type of leadership we should be led by, and be informed by that, by facts, then I think we should be in a better sort of like environment. But when we are led by like, you know, statements and like, you know, uh, whatever people can want to say, anyway, however, and then just think that, oh, no, they can just say whatever anyway and destroy anything. And there are no consequences. I don't think we can then build up a country that is then like, you know, built on, you know, a strong foundation. It should matter, you know, what the truth is, what the facts are, and how we move forward. Because then that then like builds a strong foundation for us being able to move forward. Unless we can then do that. Because unless then we like because you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I thank the good Lord that we've been able to stand and are still here five years ago, that then we can then still like, you know, time, you know, has allowed us this. And being able to now come and say this, you know, the truth is now able to be told. Many do not get that opportunity and they get obliterated in the process. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And no, business, we have a problem of like, you know, a, an issue of like you know, investment in the country, we have a problem of hope in the country, we have a problem of like, you know, fear in the country. And with this type of like, you know, uh, uh, leadership, with this type of like, you know, uh, narrative continuing that cannot be challenged, that cannot be like, you know, taken off, there is no way we can then improve on those situations. We need to be able to hold people to account. So what are the consequences for Antiholomisa? You know, there's another thing, you know, I don't know, you know, there's this challenge I have with, with our legal system on this issue of punitive damages. And in this situation, when then punitive damages can just be like, you know, taken to be at the maximum, you know, uh, 500,000 and then like, you know, and an entity like this, you know, which wanted to destroy jobs, which wanted to destroy careers, which wanted to destroy families, you know, which wanted like, you know, to burn fields in the way that they wanted to. And then they could just hide behind some sort of like, you know, privilege that because, you know, they are politicians and then they can just say as they wish. And then it can just be a slap on the wrist for them. Of then we don't know who even funds them to get that, like, you know, 500,000 or to fight those type of cases. And then we go to court and all they, they get, uh, the uh, punitive damages for is like 500,000. I do not think that that is enough, sort of like, of a deterrence to get them to do the right thing or to get them to stop. I think we should, I'm a big proponent 
of proper punitive damages. Alec, you are very much well aware. We had to like, you know, you know, stop some of our fundraising activities. We had to like, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, stop some of our engagement to some of like our international partners. You know, we had to sort of like, you know, uh, delay some of our investment activities. We had to like, you know, go through processes whereby we had to like, you know, give up on certain opportunities. Because we were supposed to have like, by now listed some of our certain opportunities, but we had to like, all those had to be delayed. And it's a lot and lot of money. And it's lots of lots of like, you no know, investment which could have been made. And there was a lot of collusion with all sorts of like other players in the market to make sure that that happens to our business with other regulatory entities making sure that. And if an entity like that is let off on that type of, you know, slap on the wrist, what then does it say for them continuing with that? I'm a big fan that we should be able to sue for all those losses, which runs into the hundreds of millions of rands of damages caused over the past five years. And it's not, I don't even mm. start to talk about the emotional damage done to oneself, to one's family, to one's children, and to one's associates. Someone, then, I was talking who to, to take, yeah. you know, hits in all these things. So it's it's very personal. I was talking to Wendy Addison today. She was the original whistleblower for LeisureNet. And because the court case hadn't concluded, she could not get a job. Chartered accountant from South Africa blew the whistle. LeisureNet, as we know, was a massive fraud. But because the court case was being conducted, she was unemployable. And in fact, she was begging. She ended up literally begging outside a railway station. That is not quite the situation here. You had resources, but the abuse of the legal process in a case like this, and because the law takes so long to get to a conclusion, has got all kinds of hidden consequences, unintended consequences, and those that you're talking about now. When you say hundreds of millions of rands in, in losses, is this because people looked online and said, mm, rather not do business with Harris or with uh, Lebeche? That's, that's a reality of the situation. In our business, like, you know, we go through, you know, a lot of due diligences for the type of thing that, that, that we do. And you can imagine, we also like you know, had like you know some you know uh, businesses like you know in the UK, and because of some of these things like you know we you know we couldn't like rebuild for some of those businesses. Though some of them they won't tell you like you no know, directly. You know that it was because of some of those allegations. You know they are just too kind to not tell you that that this is like you no know, what should like cause that. Because then why do things then just suddenly turn? Because before, you know, you had the business, you did well, the performance improved. What's your thought on the punitive damages and the extent it should be? Because clearly you're saying we should be following some American type system where there is a consequence of the harm that can be caused through these kind of allegations when they're baseless. To the extent that you can like show those period, uh, those uh, damages that you suffered and what they have caused and what they have related to and the uh, effect of them, I think we should be able like not to go beyond that. Then I think it will make people think at least twice, maybe there's only trust before they embark on those types of, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, actions. So that people uh, think, as if for them to hide behind being MPs and think that MPs may have for a special privilege, 
that they can then be attacking, you know, perhaps uh, business or private entities. It's a bit of a challenge because then there is no recourse for business in that regard because you then attack in that sort of like environment. It's not that you want to sort of like, you know, inhibit, you know, freedom of speech or those types of issues. But, you know, we should all, you know, have uh, the same type of rights. We should all have, like, you know, the ability to, like, you know, not be diminished of our ability to, like, uh, you know, defend our uh, dignity. Because we all have a right to dignity. I don't think somebody should have, like, a right to more dignity than the other. And we should therefore then be accountable in that respect. One person does not have a right to dignity than the other. So the the court case against Tolomisa, that continues. And that's the challenge of it all. If you consider that this now started uh, five years ago, the one, you know, of the case only concluded like no last year in the constitutional court. Which you could, and then the other one of the damages still continues. It still costs, even besides all these things. And, you know, so this process just keeps on continuing despite all these other different sort of like, you know, uh, conclusions which have been reached and shown. But this sort of like, you know, litigious nature of no irresponsibility goes on. Tepo Malelwa is the chairman of Harris and Le Boucher and of Arena Holdings. And I'm Alec Hogg from Business.com. 